And we're back now with the Pulitzer Prize winning New York Times correspondent Mark Mazzetti, who has a new book out uh, Tuesday called The Way of the Knife, The CIA, A Secret Army, and a War at the Ends of the Earth. Uh, a big excerpt of your uh, book appears uh, today in the uh, Sunday edition of the Times on the front page. Uh, I, I think, uh, Mark, what makes your book so valuable, it really is the first detailed, in-depth look at this whole uh, use of drones, which has become certainly the drug of choice uh, in the war on terror, uh, and how it has evolved. As you got into this, what was it that uh, surprised you most? Well, I think what surprised me most is how much um, this type of warfare, um, away from the big wars in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, have um, come to be embraced by Washington by two presidents, um, a conservative Republican, a liberal Democrat, both have chosen these wars outside of the war zones in places like Pakistan, and Yemen, and Somalia uh, as a, um, a, a way to do battle in secret uh, without talking about it with the American public. And it's extraordinary how much it goes on. And, and another thing that, that really surprised me is when you wage war in these kind of ways, the different characters who come in to play, who, who play outsized roles, um, are, are really interesting. And some of those characters I tried to explore in the book. You know, I mean, uh, for example, uh, we are now training more drone pilots than we are training pilots. Uh, that, that's right. And we have different uh, qualifications. In the Air Force, you have to be a pilot before you can get into the drone program. And that's not the case, I think, uh, in the CIA, if I understand it. Well, the, uh, and in some cases, actually, you do have military pilots actually operating CIA drones. Uh -huh. um, it's amazing how much um, there's been this convergence over the years between the military and the CIA. Um, in a place like Yemen, you have the CIA running a drone war, the military running a drone war. Sometimes the CIA uh, drones are, are operated by military pilots. The soldiers have become spies and the spies have become soldiers. And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's really this phenomenon over the last decade. I was out in, in uh, Holloman Air Force Base a year ago, which is where they train the drone pilots. And, and as you said, um, this, is, this is where the Air Force is going, um, outside of the cockpits and into the, the ground trailers. Who can order the use of a drone? Uh, you know, we have a, we all know what the rules are on using nuclear weapons. It's only the president who can authorize their use. Are there sets of rules under which these, uh, these weapons are, are operated? Uh, do they have to answer certain questions? And who actually can, has the power to launch them? There are, it, it depends on the country. And right now the Obama administration is trying to figure out what they call this playbook, to figure out these rules that you're talking about, because they haven't really been worked out, um, that will be set in stone for years to come and for future presidents to use. You have, in Pakistan, um, the CIA director um, can authorize drone strikes, or the deputy CIA director. Um, uh, outside of Pakistan, in, in places like Yemen, that right now has to go through the White House. It has to be signed off formally by John Brennan, who's now the CIA director, uh, but was at the White House, and then ultimately by President Obama. So. There's different rules for different places, and this is what everyone is trying to wrestle with right now. There, there are obviously great advantages to using this. Uh, I mean, you, uh, no American lives are going to be lost mm -hmm. when you launch a drone because they're operated from far, far away from the battlefield. But sometimes there are civilian casualties, and uh, there are all kind of questions. What are the questions that we need to be thinking about uh, on the use of these weapons? Well, I think some of the questions are um, where to use them. As you said, it's, it's the drug of choice. There's a seductive quality to this because the feeling is that there are no risks. But um, when something is easier to use, uh, you use it more. And so the question is, what would be the standard? What's the threshold for the U.S. going to war? And it is war. Um, as you said, a nuclear weapon is so powerful that you developed a whole doctrine so that you never had to use them. Uh, with drones, we're still trying to work this out. So what is the threshold? What is the imminence of the threat to the United States for using it? Um, what is the collateral damage? Um, those types of questions, I think, are going to be, have to be worked out for the future. And we use them a lot more 
than people are aware, and we've been using them for a long time. We've been using them for a long time, and we've been using them for, for more than a decade um, in more places than um, you know, even have, have been publicly acknowledged. Hundreds of drone strikes have been carried out. And, and, and I think what President Obama you know, may be doing is ultimately trying to become more public about it, but, but so far we haven't really seen too much of that. But uh, your book is fascinating. As you say, you talk about some of the characters who are involved in it and become involved in the program and the way these, uh, uh, the way these drones are used. But, uh, you know, we're now hearing that they're going to transfer them away from the CIA and put them uh, under the Pentagon's control. Uh, why is that important and why and what's that all about? Part of it has to do with this idea of um, getting the CIA back to spying. It's traditional mission, out of the paramilitary business. Really, a decade of war has changed the CIA dramatically. Uh, part of it is this idea that maybe it will be more transparent. If you have the military doing it, you have to, at some point, acknowledge the strikes, whereas the CIA under covert action authority doesn't have to acknowledge the strikes. So part of it is to maybe become a little bit more transparent with the American public, although right now it's unclear how, how long that would take to do the transfer and whether it would take place in places like Pakistan. Will the military carry out strikes in Pakistan that are acknowledged by the U.S. government. Right now, the Pakistani government doesn't want the U.S. doing that. So, so there's a lot of tricky issues that haven't been worked out, which is why I think it'll actually take far more time for this to, Do, to happen. Are there other countries that have drones, or is that just us? And if they, and how close are other countries? A lot of countries. Them? A lot of countries are developing them. Israel actually was the, were the pioneers uh, uh, for using drones. Um, Iran is developing drones. Uh, the, the Russians are developing drones. There's a lot of countries that, um, that, are, that, that we are, are planning to sit, give our drones to. So, so this is going to be the sort of future of warfare. And these rules uh, that we're talking about that the U.S. is setting um, are going to be used by other countries in some ways that the United States may not like. So, so that's what's to come um, in this way of war. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Thank it's you. A fascinating subject. It's a fascinating book. We'll be right back.